So this is another kind of a tutorial type question. Um, in part A, you work out the pressure and working out the pressure will help you answer part B because uh, there's a relationship between pressure and force. And C is just independent. It doesn't have anything to do with, to with that. So let me just work through this um, to, well, do I want to do C? Yeah, well, C, C seems tedious. That, and I think everyone knows how to do it. So let me not do C. I'll do A and B because that actually involves ideal guess law. Uh, the hint does give you all the numbers you need. Um, and unless people want me to do it, I won't do C. So, um, so the hint will tell you to use ideal guess law. And it links you to the section that covers ideal guess law. If you somehow didn't read through the chapter, let me write down the ideal guess law here. By the way, there's something peculiar, not quite so peculiar, something different from your textbook that I do in this class is that I avoid using Avogadro's number. I don't like arbitrary constants and I consider Avogadro's number one of those, at least in physics class. You know, in chemistry class, I see the reason for it. In physics class, Avogadro's number is unnecessary. So the version of ideal guess law that you will see us always use is this one. Pressure times volume is equal to capital N, which counts the number of molecules, like here. It doesn't count the number of moles. Um, N times um, Boltzmann constant times the temperature. The kind of the distinction between a uh, version where you see Avogadro's number used and where you don't see it, it's basically how this portion is expressed. When you're using Avogadro's number and moles, you use lowercase n for number of moles times r for gas constant. And um, uh, so this nr is basically equal to that. And in this class, you will just see me use NKB. I won't ever bring up Avogadro's number except to say that I'm not using it. And all the questions you see in the uh, class will be coded uh, consistent with that. I will almost never ask you about Avogadro's number or number of moles of anything. Um, now, again, in chemistry, that approach won't make sense because a lot of the concentrations are in like a molar uh, uh, molarity and whatnot. Uh, in physics class, that this is kind of typical physics way to do things. So that's how I'm gonna do it. So we are using this ideal guess law to work out the um, answers here. So um, the question gives you the volume. So um, I'm just kind of marking out all the things I know. I know volume. Um, the question gives you number of molecules, I know N. The question gives us the temperature, so I know T. So I have one unknown, pressure, which is what part A is asking for. So it's a simple matter of solving for it. The pressure is given by NKBT divided by volume. Now, if you simply plug in these numbers, you'll get wrong answer. Um, what you have to be careful here is you have to use SI units and none of, not none of, well, none of the unity quantities are because this is just a number. So it doesn't have any units. I'll just use it. That's fine. But 20 degrees C, uh, that's not the basic SI unit. The basic SI unit of temperature is Kelvin. Um, tell, yeah, tell that to people who somehow claim that Celsius is more scientific than Fahrenheit. Neither of them are what you should be using is Kelvin. So we should say this is 293 Kelvin. And this is the number I need to use. And the liters are also not basic SI units. The basic SI unit of volume is a meter cubed. And one meter cubed, it's actually a quite a large volume. Um, in terms of, let's see, a cubic centimeter, it's a million cubic centimeter, uh, which is cubic centimeter is also equal to a milliliter. So in terms of liters, one cubic meter is a thousand liters. So when you have this 1.8 liters um, in SI, basic SI units, 
it should be 1.8 times 10 to the minus 3 cubic meter. So once you do all this uh, unit conversions and plug in the numbers in correct units, you will get the correct answer in Pascals. And that's where you have to kind of look at the question and notice that it's asking in kilopascals and not to convert it to kilo, uh, from pascals to kilopascals. So let me do that calculation quickly and uh, get an answer and plug it in. It's kind of why we're using this annotation thing. So n is 2.8 times raised to power of 10 to the 23 times Boltzmann constant. Oh, I don't have that. Is it in one of the hints? It's not. I need to look, up, look it up in the textbook. Yeah, I don't think I have that one memorized. So let me look up the Boltzmann constant and plug it in. It, yeah, there it is. So times uh, Boltzmann constant. 1.38 1.38 times 10 to the power of 20 minus 23 okay good let me go back and temperature 293 so times 293 divide by the volume 1.8 times 10 to the power of minus 3 Okay, all of that is equal to, I get uh, 628,973. So, so that's in Pascals. So in Pascals, it would be, uh, let me move the calculator off to my second screen and copy this number here. Um, 628. And I'll start with the nine, seven. I mean, that's already a little bit too much. I could have written this six to nine. So that's in Pascals. To convert it to kilopascals, you divide it by a thousand. So the answer here should be six to, uh, well, six to nine. Let me round it off there. So let me plug that in, see what we get. Six to nine. Hopefully that's correct. Yeah. Um, by the way, in case uh, people are not familiar with uh, this tool, so you saw how tedious all this plugging in numbers into calculator was. And um, it's very easy to make mistakes at this step. And even though, you know, I think you should know how to use calculator. In case you are getting on the wrong answer and you're not sure if it's a calculator mistake, one tool I want you to be aware of and know that you are allowed to use it for this class is Ulfram Alpha. Wolfram Alpha is a, uh, it's a particularly nice in that it's a unit aware program. You can even do, I think you can do this. Let me try this. So the expression I had was P, um, NKBT over V. So let me just actually just put that in 2.8 uh, times 10 to the minus 23. That's the E notation and KB. Boltzmann constant. It's also aware of a bunch of physical constants times the temperature. I think I can put in 20 degrees C and Wolfram Alpha will convert it to Kelvins. Um, divide by the volume, 1.8 liters. Let me put that in and see. And it, Wolfram Alpha will tell you how it interpreted your answer, your input. So make sure it interpreted it correctly, 2.8 times 10 to 23 Boltzmann constant times that over that. And it gives you this answer, which is the same answer I got, so it must be right. Now, you know, th th there's a downside here in that you, if you are just doing it this way, you never learned that, you know, putting in just 20 is not right. You had to put in, convert it to Kelvins. Wolfram Alpha did that conversion for you. Um, so, so this is a kind of a crutch but sometimes it is a useful, useful crutch. So I want you to be aware of it. I want you to know that you're allowed to use it. If you, you know, if somehow you're getting stuck and you want to rule out the calculator mistake as a possible reason. All right, so it says uh, for part B, given the pressure in A above, 
what is the magnitude of the force on one wall of the cubic container by the sample of nitrogen gas. Hmm. So I know the relationship between force and pressure. Um, force, no, sorry, not definition of pressure is force per area. So if I no, need to know the force due to pressure, that will be pressure times the area. Hmm, so I need the area. Uh, so I need the area of one wall. Oh, so I guess it's a cube. So, you know, you know the relationships. If a uh, side of um, cube is L, then its volume was L cubed and its area will be L squared. So I'm given the cubic volume. So I can take the cube root of it and then square it to get the area. Let me do that on my calculator. So I'm gonna do this in SI units so that everything works out nice, nicely. In SI units, the volume is 1.8 times 10 to the power of minus three. Let me take the cube root. There are, I don't see cube root also. Okay, okay, so I'll raise it to power of um, one over three. And then uh, let me just do equals and then square it. There's the square. So that's the area. Um, area of a, a cubic wall is 0 0.01480. Point zero one four eight zero meter cubed. So, um, so it's the pressure times the area that'll give me the answer in newtons. I'm going to on the fly convert kilopascals to pascals. So the force should be six to nine thousand times that's in pascals times the area that I just calculated zero point zero one four eight zero. So the force on one of the walls should be, that feels a little bit large. Yeah, let's see what happens. <laughs> oh, but that's a pretty high pressure. That's like six atmosphere. So it's probably right, we'll see. So um, let me round it to three significant figures, 9310, 9310 Newtons. All right, that's it's correct. <laughs> all right, so that's, uh, um, so that's all we have time for. That's actually 10 minutes more than we had time for.